Okay, so the next example that we have here is example number is example number 22 and that is let f be a function from some set to another set so this is example example 22 now you the question is let f be a function from from 1 2 3 from this set to another set a b and c b 1 1 and unto function b a 1 1 and unto function given by given by f of 1 f of 1 is equal to a f of 2 is equal to b and f of 3 is equal to c now show that You want to show that there exists So you want to show that there exists a function G a function G from A B C to one two three from A B C to 1, 2, and 3, such that, such that g o f is equal to i of x, g o f is equal to i of x, and f o g is equal to i of y, and f o g is equal to i of y, where, where x is equal to one two three and and y is equal to and y is equal to a b and c okay so now since we don't have much space here i'm going to make a screenshot and I'm going to make a screenshot here and then we will we will solve the problem somewhere else. Okay, so so basically what we have here is this is basically the same example that we had before that we talked about the uh, the identity function on on, on, on sets A and B and so on and so forth. So, so basically here what we are saying is that there is some set X, there is some set that we have called X and that is equal to, that is the same thing as 1, 2 and 3. And we have another set that we have called Y and that is the same thing as A, B and C. Right? Now, we have a function over here, f, that goes from set x to set y. That goes from the set x to set y. And this is a 1, 1 and unto function. This is a 1, 1 and unto function. And uh, basically, the rule of this function is f of 1 is equal to a f of 1 is equal to a and f of 2 is equal to b and f of and f of 3 is equal to c and you want to show that there exists a another function you want to show that there exists another function g 
from from basically from this function is from x to y that function is from y to x from y to x <coughs> such that basically g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y so so basically what that means is that GOF is equal to I of X. That means that GOF is the, is the identity function on, 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 on set, on set X and FOG is the identity function on set Y. So that's basically the question that we have here, right? Now in order to answer this question, what we need to do is that, uh, um, as as a solution, you can say that uh, you can say that consider G consider G as a function from consider G as a function from y to x, meaning from a b c to one two three a b c to to basically one two three such that uh, as basically f of a is equal to 1, you can say f of f of a is equal to 1 and f of b is equal to 2 and f of c is equal to 3 and f of c is equal to 3. Now it can be verified now this is this is the function that you were looking for, meaning that we wanted to show that there exists g from y to x such that g o f is equal to i of x and f of g, f of f o g is equal to i of y, right? So now what we want to show is that basically um, taking this this the function that we have that we have defined here as as a as as the function g, then these two f o g is equal to i of x and I'm sorry, g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y, both are true. So let's, let's, let's see how we can, we can show that. Okay, so now in order to show that, first of all, you need to understand the definition here. Meaning that when you say that g o f, uh, when you say that g o f is, when you say that g o f is equal to i of x, that means that, what that means is that, that means that, that means that basically G O F, as you can see here by the letter I, G O F is the, is the identity function, is the identity function, identity function on on set X, and you can see that the letter X here, on set X, and that means that basically any, uh, well, what that means is that again, that, it, that, that in turn means that, that means that basically any, um, basically that means that simply well, if you want to, if you, if you actually want to know what that means, I have to show you what that means. So, GOF of X, GOF of X, or any other variable for that matter, X is not that, that important as far as at least this expression is, is, is concerned. GOF, GOF of X is equal to G of F of X by definition. Now, if I calculate g of, for example, f of, uh, g of f of, for example, you, you see that f, the function f of x can, can take arguments from the, from this, from this set x because the domain is, is, is the set x here. Meaning that if I calculate, for example, g of, if I calculate f of 1 here, f of 1 gives me a or f of 2 gives me b, or f of 3 gives me c. That means that f of 1 gives me a, 
f of 2 gives me b and f of 3 gives me c. That's what function f does. And basically then if I calculate based on that, if I calculate g of f of 1 for example, g of f of 1. So what that means is that uh, since f of 1 is equal to a, then g of f of 1 is equal to g of a. And then what function g does is that it says it, it says that, and these are actually supposed to be g's. I apologize for that. So g of a is equal to 1, right? g of a is equal to 1. That means that g of f of 1, that means that g of f of 1 is equal to 1. Now if I calculate g of f of 2 here, which is equal to b, then g of f of 2 is equal to g of b is equal to g of b which is equal to uh, g of b as you can see over here is equal to 2. That means that g of f of 2 g of f of 2 is equal to 2. And as you can see and then by the same logic you will come to the conclusion that g of f of 3 is equal to is equal to uh, basically 3 meaning that you can say that g of f of x is equal to x x belonging to the set to the set x basically right or you can or instead of g of f of x is equal to x you can say that g o f of x is equal to x for all x belonging to the set x. So now by definition you can call this since since basically since this happens that for all elements of x actually I should write this this way meaning that it's better to write this this statement as for all x belonging to the set x g o f of x g o f of x is equal to x. That is, that's another, that, what that means is that, um, when I say this, when I say that g o f of x is equal to x for all x belonging to x, what that means is that, um, what that means is that if I pick, um, what well, this, what the, this is statement, as far as I can understand, this statement does not include all x's, all possible x's from the set x. But when I say that for all x belonging to x, g o f of x is equal to x, that means that this statement, that this statement must be true for all of the, for all of the members of the set, of the set x. So, and since that is actually the case, then I, then I, then I'm going to say that for all x belonging to capital X, then g o f of x is equal to x, right? And since since this happens, then you can say that then you can say that g o f of x is equal to x is equal to i of x is equal to i of x, which is basically then you can call g o f of x the the identity the identity function. The identity function on set X. What that means is that any, any, any basically since this, this is called I of X or the identity function on set X. And what that means is that any, any basically any X that you pick from the, from the, from the, from the set capital X, if you put it into if you put it into, if you input it into GOF, you are going to get the same thing. And for the same reason, GOF of X, it has been called the identity function on set X. Now, by the same logic, you will see that, by the same logic, you will see that FOG is equal to I of Y. You will see that FOG, FOG of X, or FOG basically, FOG without any Y really 
you can see that FOG is equal to I of Y, which means that, which means that the identity, the identity function, the identity function on set Y. What that means is that for every Y, for every Y belonging to the set Y, then FOG of y is equal to y and you can see it over here you can you, you can actually see that you can see that basically for example when i when i write f o g of y that is equal to f of g of y right now g of y over here what we said that g of a is equal to one g of b is equal to two g of c is equal to three we said that g of a is equal to is equal to 1 and g of b is equal to 2 and g of c is equal to is equal to 3 and you know that basically a b and c all belong to the set y right so what that means is that and and then we said that now if i calculate f of f of g of a f of g of a what that means is that i'm calculating f of g of g of a is equal to one so i'm calculating f of one and you know that f of one gives you a back which means that g of uh, which means that f of g of a is actually equal to a and then by the same logic you will see that f of g of b is going to be equal to b and then by the same logic you'll be able to see that f of g of c is going to be equal to c which means that which, which is again the same the same state the same conclusion over here for every y belonging to the set y f o g of y is equal to i i is equal to y which for the same reason then f f o g is is basically called i of y which is the identity function on set y, meaning that any element of the set y, if you put it into, if you input it into f of f o g, you're going to get the same thing back. Okay. So, and so you can see that, you can see that having this, having this situation here where x is some set and y is another set and f is some function from f from x to y and if of course f is 1 1 and unto if f is 1 1 and unto then you can then you can basically create another function g from uh, from from basically from the from the codomain of f to the domain of f meaning that f was from x to y now g has to be from y to x the reverse order that we had in f in such a way that uh, in such a way that g o f is i of x is the identity function on the domain of x and the and and f o g is basically the identity the identity function on the on the on the codomain of on the codomain of uh, f basically right so we can write this we can write this in the following way we can write this that 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 um, suppose that suppose that you have suppose that you have some function some function f from x to y now assuming that assuming that that f is 1 1 is 1 1 and unto it is possible it is possible to find another function Another function, say, 
say uh, g which is a function from y to x which is a function from y to x uh, in such a way that in such a way that basically g o f of g o f basically is equal to the identity function on the domain of f in such a way that the g o f is equal to the identity function on the domain of f and f o g is equal to the identity function on the co-domain of f and that is basically and now we hopefully we understand the meaning of this the meaning of this statement And as you can see, there is a whole world of um, there is a whole world of definitions and everything in each and every one of these um, examples here that need to be understood. Now, as a remark here, I could say that uh, as a remark here, there is a there is a remark in the text text that says that the interesting fact is that the result mentioned in the above example is true for an arbitrary 1 1 and unto function f from x to y so then you can say that this result this result is true for any for any arbitrary arbitrary 1 1 1 1 and unto function function f from x to y now meaning that for any for any arbitrary one one and unto function f from x to y this result is true not only this not only this uh, even the converse is also true. Even the converse is also true. Meaning that, uh, meaning that, meaning that, let's see what the converse actually, what they mean by the converse here. Even the converse is also true. That is, if f from x to y is a function, That is, if f is a function from x to y, if, as a, if f is a function from f to x to y, is a function such that, is a function such that, such that there exists a function, there exists a function uh, y f uh, a function for example g from y to x g from y to x such that such that g o f of g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y then f must be 1, 1, and unto. Then f must be 1, 1, and unto. So what we are saying here is that, is that suppose that you have some function f from x to y, and assuming that f is 1, 1, and unto, it's possible to find another function, say g, from y to x in such a way that g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y. Now we understand what that means. Now the converse of this is also true, meaning that, meaning that if you if f is a function from x to y is a function, uh, 
such that there exists a function g from y to x such that g o f of g o f is equal to i of x and f of g is equal to i of y, then f must be 1, 1 and unto. That's the converse of the, the, what we said before. Now the above this 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 discussion uh, example number twenty two and then and the remark that we talked about here leads to the following definition 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 number number nine okay so definition number nine is a function f from x to y a function from function f from x to y is defined to be invertible is defined to be invertible uh, if there exists a function g y if if there exists a function a function g from g from basically from y to x a function g from y to x such that such that g o f is equal to i of x and and f o g is equal to is equal to i of y <coughs> the function g is called the inverse of f the function g is called the inverse of f and is denoted by and, in, and is denoted by f inverse so what we are saying here is that at function f from x to y is defined to be invertible if there exists a function g from y to x such that g o f is equal to i of x and therefore g is equal to i of y meaning that if you can find the function if you can find the function basically g from y to x in such a way that g o f is the identity function and the domain of the function and the domain of the function f and f o g is a is an identity function and the and the co-domain of the function f and that is that is so because because here we said that basically if you have some function f from x to y if basically f is one one and unto then then it's possible to find the function to function to find the function say for example g from y to x in such a way that g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y and we said that the converse of this was also true meaning that we said that uh, if f is a function from x to y if it's a function such that there exists a function g from y to x such that g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y then f must be one one and unto right now the condition that we are using here for the for for a function f to be invertible we are saying that the function f from x to y is defined to be invertible if you can find the function g from y to x right in such a way that g o f is i of x and f o g is i of y meaning that g o f is the identity function and the domain of f and the and the f o g is the identity function and the and the codomain of f and if when that happens is that what that means is that uh, suppose that you have this function f over here and uh, 
provided the, that the function is 1, 1, and unto, it is actually possible that, that you can find a function g from, g from y to x in such a way that g of is equal to i of x and f of g is equal to i of y. So we said that it's, it's possible to do that. <coughs> so then when you use this, this condition here, when we say that basically, okay, so when you use this condition here, what that means is that now you have this function f over here uh, from x to y, which is, uh, you have this function f from x to y. Now, if there exists a function g from y to x in such a way that g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y, then the function g is called the inverse of f and then the function f is, is said to be invertible. Now, when this happens, when, 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 when you, you can find that function, that function g from y to x in such a way that this happens and that happens, what that means is that the function f must have been basically 1, 1 and unto in the first place. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been possible to do so, to, to go through all of those steps. That was the, the first condition that we had in the first place. Meaning that first f has to be 1, 1 and unto, and then it's possible to, to find a function g from y to x in such a way that basically g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y. So, so that condition is automatically the condition that basically f is 1, 1 and unto. These two conditions are automatically met. And so, it's very simple. Basically, you have a function f from x to y. Suppose that you can find the function g from y to x in such a way that g of f is of i of x and f of g is equal to i of y. Then g is called the inverse of f, which is denoted by f inverse or f raised to the power negative one. And uh, and this is not and this is not the same thing as when you write f raised to the power negative one. This is not the same thing as one over f raised to the power one. That's 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 not what that means. This is this is simply the inverse of f. And uh, and so what that means is that um, then you can you can you can call g the inverse of f, and that 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 automatically means that f must have been one, one, and unto in the first place, and then you could find a function g from y to x in such a way that these two conditions are also met, and then, and then that function, that function g basically takes you back from wherever you go from f, meaning that wherever you start and wherever you are, f takes you from there to some other place, and then from that place, if you want to go back to the same place where you started, then you have to use g in order to get 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 back there. It's just like, for example, it's just like, for example, you are at you are in town one, and there is also town two over here, right? So there there is these two towns. Now suppose that there is a bus that takes you from town one to town two. I call it bus one. And suppose that there is. There is some other bus that takes you from town 2 to town 1, back to town 1. Now, this is bus 2. So this bus 1, you can think of bus 1 as the function f, and you can think of the bus 2 as function g. Function f takes you from, from, from town 1 to town 2, and then if you want to get back to town 1, then you can use the bus 2 or the function g in order to get back there. That's, that's what it means. So, so that is basically the, the, the whole story here. Now let's, let's see, let's do a couple of, uh, um, let's do a couple of examples here. Now, the, 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 this definition is not done yet. So thus, if f is invertible, then s, f must be 1, 1 and unto and conversely, so then you can say that thus, thus a, if f is invertible, if f is invertible, 
invertible <coughs> then f must be 1 1 and on 2 then f must be must be 1 1 <coughs> 1 1 and on 2 right and conversely And conversely, if f is 1, 1, and unto, and conversely, if f is 1, 1, and, and unto, then f must be invertible. Then f must be invertible. So this is a this is the logical conclusion of all of those things that I said about all the definitions and everything that we did there. So hopefully you understand why why that is. Because if I want to say why that is, then I have to 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 start repeating the same thing over and over again. And this fact significantly helps for proving a function f to be invertible. By showing that it is that it is one one and unto, especially when the actual inverse of the function is not determined, is not to be determined. So what that means is that when you want to prove that a function is invertible, then it's it's simply enough to prove that the function is one one and unto. And if the function is one one and unto, then that means that it is actually invertible. And this is helpful when you when the uh, when when the when the actual inverse of f is not you don't you don't really need that the inverse of the function f but you want to decide whether it is invertible or not simply if you check whether it is one one and also unto then you can uh, then you can show that it is invert invertible and that's that's basically the whole story now let's do a couple of a couple of examples here. Uh, we have example number 23, 24, and 25, and 26, and there is still a couple of things to cover here. Okay, so now let's do a couple of examples here. For example, example number 23, and for that I guess we will move up here. So example number 23, which is let f a function from n to y, a function from n to y, be a function defined as, be a function defined as, Find as f of x is equal to 4x plus 3. As f of x is equal to 4x plus 3, where, where y is equal to, where y is equal to the set of all y belonging to the set of natural numbers such that, this is supposed to be such that, such that y um, such that y is equal to 4 x plus 3 such that y is equal to 4 x plus 3 for some for some x belonging to n such that y is equal to 4 x plus 3 for some For some x belonging to n. Okay, so that is basically the set y. So basically, the set y is the set of all of these y's, the set of all of these y's which belong to the set of natural number in such a way that y is equal to 4x plus 3. 
And this happens to be also the same rule that we have for the function, meaning that the rule of the function is f of x is equal to 4x plus 3, which means that any, any, basically, any x that you put, that you pick in the set of natural numbers, you are going to you are going to basically you are going to uh, basically multiply that x by 4 and add a 3 to that and then that becomes that becomes the the image of the image of that x in the in in the set y and the set y basically is a is a collection of these y's that is basically 4x plus 3 for some x belonging to n. It's an unusual thing, but let's see how, let's see how this goes through. So you want to show that f is in invertible. You want to show that f is invertible. f is invertible and, and find the inverse. And you want to find the inverse. So we said that a function f from we said that a function f from x to y from x to y is invertible is invertible if there exists if there exists a a function a function a function g from y to x such that such that uh, basically um, g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y so that is basically that, it, that was basically the, the definition that we had. We said that the function f from x to y is defined to be invertible if there exists a function g from y to x such that g o f is equal to i of x and f o g is equal to i of y. And then the function g will be called the inverse of f and is denoted by f inverse. Now, this was the definition. This was the definition, and so we can we can now work with this definition. So what that means is that basically I have this function f from n to y, and this y is basically this set over here. It is defined by this rule and so on and so forth. Now what you what you need to do is that you need to basically f is a function from n to y in order to find the in order to show that f is invertible, you need to show that there exists basically a function, for example, g or whatever you want to call it from y to n, uh, such that, uh, such that g o f is equal to i of, i of, i of basically n and uh, f o g is equal to i of y basically here, uh, this y over here. So, so then based on this definition, based on this definition, we basically in order to, in order to show that f is invertible, in order to show that, that f is invertible we need to show that we need to show that there exists a function a function say say y from y to n 
from y to n uh, such that such that basically g o f is equal to i of the domain of the function which is n meaning that this is an this is an identity um, this is an identity function on the on the set uh, this is an identity function on the set n and and f o g is equal to i of y this this set y over here this set y over here and f o g is equal to i of y which is basically an identity function on the set y and when we said that g o f is i of n or then or or an identity function on the set n what that means is that whatever basically whatever you pick from the set of natural numbers and if you when you input that into this function then this function is going to give you back the same input or the output of the function is going to be the input that you input input to to the function provided that that input is from the set of natural numbers and moreover also you need what 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 it means to say that f o g is equal to i of y what that means is that any input that you pick from the from the set y here whatever you pick from this set and if you input into this function f o g the function is going to give you back the same input that you input into the function that's that's basically the meaning of the that's 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 what it means when we say that this is an identity function on the set y and identity function on the set n basically or any other set for that matter really so then in order to do this what we need to do is that um, okay so now i i was reading this and i and i and i realized that i have made a mistake here this is of course supposed to be g now over here in the while i was writing down this problem i i said that basically this is unusual meaning that f basically is is a function that goes from n to y and this is a function defined as such and such right now and y is basically f y is basically a set with this description right now the way the, the reason why they have done this is that basically y um, does have does contain only the elements that that f maps maps to meaning that um, you know that basically in order for a function to be um, to be invertible of course you need to be able to get back from all the elements of the range to all the elements of the domain what i mean to say is that for example suppose that you have a function like for example f of x is equal to x let's say that the let's say that the, that f is a function from n to n for example the set of natural numbers to the set of natural numbers so what that means is that basically uh, whatever you input into this function you will get the same thing back and that means that you will get a straight line with a 45 degree angle which is going to be exactly exactly like this so this is your x and this is your for example f of x now as you can see uh, if i if i pick any point on this graph and map it to the map it to the domain and to the range of the function or to the co-domain and the domain of the function you can see this distance over here is exactly the same distance over here right so this distance if i call it a if i call this b a a is always equal to b no matter where you pick this point if you pick this point over here then again you will get the same thing again a is equal is going to be equal to b and a and b are always equal and always grow together as you move back and forth and along this 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 slanted line 
Now this is a this is of course a uh, this is of course a one one function meaning that for any input for any distinct input in the in the domain of the function you are going to get an, a distinct output in the in the codomain of the function meaning that for example in this function f of 0 is equal to 0 f of 1 is equal to 1 f of 2 is equal to 2 f of 3 is equal to 3 and so on and so forth and of course since we are working with the set of natural numbers then this part is just simply not not important here because these are all negative x's and negative y's so so that that just that's just not relevant here right only this part up here now so based on this there there is no two distinct elements of the domain that you can find that have the same image in the in the codomain of the function and based on that you can say that the function is of course one one and of course the function is onto or surjective because every every member of the of the codomain of the function is the image of some element in the domain of, in the domain of the function for example there is no there is no natural number that you can find that you can find here that is not the that is not the the image of some element in the domain of the function so the function is one one and onto the function is 1, 1, and unto, right? And so if I write this as if I want to get the the if I want to get the 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 inverse of this function, I can simply write, for example, some function g which goes from n back to n, and that function would I could call it g of x, for example, or I could call it g of x and uh, I would say g of x is equal to x again again the same function basically now this does not happen in the case of a function with a with a with a with with a different rule for example meaning that let's say that I have that I have a function for example f that goes from n to n and the rule of the function is for example f of x is equal to 2x now in this case what you would get is that you would get a line with the slope 2 meaning that you would get this line over here and this line would simply this is x and this is f of x this line would simply map all of the natural numbers to twice twice basically to, to, to the same natural number twice itself meaning that whatever you input here you will get twice that 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 input as the output meaning that for example one is mapped to two one is simply mapped to two here and then for example three is mapped to three is mapped to four here and for example um, and for example 4 is mapped to 8 here this is supposed to I'm sorry 3 is mapped to 6 here right so what that means is that what that means is that then the, the problem here is that now this function of course is 1 1 it's a 1 1 function we have no problem with that all of the all of the basically distinct elements of the of the domain has a distinct as as a distinct image in the codomain of the function we have no problem with that but then as you can see the codomain of the function is the set of natural numbers now the set of natural numbers is not just 2 4 8 and so on and so forth one is also there three is also there or basically five is also there and so on and so forth so one, three, five, seven, and so on and so forth. These are the elements in the set of natural number that are not the images of that are not the images of some of some uh, of some element in the domain of the function. And so what that means is that the function is not uh, is not unto.
or you can say it's, it is not it is not surjective it is not surjective now since it's not surjective there is no way to there is no way to find the to find the, the inverse of this function because the inverse of this function should be able to should be able to basically get back from these elements to the to the domain of the function as well meaning that suppose that I said that for example let's take for example f of x as y and write this as y is equal to 2x and then x based on that would be equal to y divided by 2 right now if I if I if I use this and write this as now if I changed all of these variables and write this and wrote this as for example um, instead of f of x I write for example g of x is equal to x divided by 2 it simply change the variables here so that I get a I get a function now what happens here is that what happens here is that uh, is that uh, basically x divided by 2 is being mapped to or you or I can I can write this as one half x now this function would be would be a function like this one and basically half so this would be this would be a function like this so the the, the slope of this function is 2 the slope of this function is simply half which means that any element that I have here, for example, um, for example, a one is mapped to, is mapped to basically half. For example, a one over here is mapped to, is mapped to half, as you can see here. Over here, you can see that this element one is mapped to half here. And this function is doing the same thing. Meaning that when you find the inverse of a function, um, the inverse of the function then basically the the range the the codomain of this function becomes the becomes the domain of this function and the domain of this function becomes the becomes the codomain of the of the other function that you find but now the problem is that for example suppose that again in the case of for example these numbers 3 um and this function of course goes from again g goes from g basically goes from n to n again right g goes from g is a function that goes from n to n to n now the problem here is that suppose that there is a uh, suppose that there is a there is some there is some some element here for example I input for example something like 1 over here suppose that x is equal to 1 if x is equal to 1 then the output of the function is going to be then g of 1 is going to be equal to basically 1 half times 1 which is equal to 1 half now the problem is that 1 half doesn't simply exist in the set of natural numbers which means that you get into you get into trouble you get into trouble when your function is not surjective right so for example f of x is equal to 2x is a one one function but it's not surjective and you will get into such problems meaning that of course the function is not invertible right now in order to but this but the problem didn't exist here the problem here was that i mean the the, the, the over here basically the 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 function was one one and unto and so we, we could find a the the inverse of the function without any problems now now here basically in order to solve this 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 type of problem what they have done is that they have they have created a set y which is exactly only the elements that this function maps to 
So this function for any x, it gives you 4x plus 3, meaning that, for example, and if we are working with the set of natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, then if n is equal to 1, then if x is equal to 1, then 4, 4 times 1 is equal to 4, plus 3 is equal to 7. If So so basically, for example, if, if x is equal to 1, then f of x is equal to 7 and then if x is equal to if x is equal to 2 then you will get 8 plus 3 is equal to 11 and so on and so forth so you can see that all of the numbers like for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 all the way up to 7 except for 7 are not included in the output of the function again from 7 up to 11 uh, 8 plus it from 7 up to 11 all of those numbers are not there and then again from uh, 11 to 15 all of those numbers are not there and so on and so forth which means that in order for the function to be invertible then of course those those elements have to be taken out from the set of natural numbers or whatever other set that it is that you're working with from the from the codomain of the function and for the same reason they have defined the the, the, the codomain of the function as some set for example y and then this y is some is 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 some elements y this is lowercase y and this is uppercase y is has been defined as all y belong to the set of natural numbers but with this rule and this rule actually does include only only the elements that that this function maps to and so that means that basically only the only the elements that this function does map to they do exist in this in the codomain of the function and so then you will get no extra elements in the in the codomain of the function and as a result the function will be surjective or unto and so as a result it will be invertible right so that's basically why they have done this and uh, in the beginning I didn't really understand why, 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 why they had done this and so I said that this is a little bit unusual. And so now let's, now that we understand basically the problem, now we can easily solve it. Okay, so now in order to solve the problem, finally, after all of the explanation, so what I'm going to do is that so we said that in order to show that f is invertible we need to show that there exists a function say g from y to n such that g o f is equal to i of n and uh, f o g is equal to i of y right now I need to basically erase all of this because I need some space here okay so now um, basically so now basically what, what we need to do is that you can say that but since we are dealing with uh, sets here, set set n and set the set y. You can argue that. You can argue that basically, consider an arbitrary element y of, of uh, of of the set y. This way, you can you can actually solve the problem. So consider an. arbitrary you can consider an arbitrary element y element y of basically the set y now by the definition of by the definition of y But the definition of y y is equal to 4x plus 3. So 
by, by this definition y is equal to 4x plus 3 I'm not talking about this 4x plus 3 that we have over here but about based on this definition we have y is equal to 4x plus 3 that means that this y represents any uh, any basically any any arbitrary element of the set y and and of course your goal is to get back from 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 any element of y to to basically to to back to the to the to the set n basically right now uh, for some x in the domain n this for some x in the in the domain in the domain n uh, this shows that uh, since we are saying that y is equal to 4x plus 3 that means that that means that basically 4x is equal to y minus 3 which means that x is equal to y minus 3 divided by divided by 4 now based on this you can define a you can define a, a function you can call it anything that you want for example g for example g from 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 the set y to the set n by for example by the rule f of y i'm sorry g of y g of y is equal to y minus 3 divided by 4 now now that we have the function we need to make sure that we need to make sure that we need to make sure that that basically gof of gof of uh, x that is g of f of x so gof of x is equal to or or you can say basically uh, you can say gof you can you can write it as gof alone without any x or y or anything like that gof is equal to basically i of x or i of basically the domain of the function which is n i of n and also and also f o g is equal to i of the 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 the, the codomain of the of the of the original function which is y now let's 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 see if that that is the case so basically gof gof is the same thing as basically g of f of x right g of f of x and f of x is equal to 4x plus 3 and you know that f of x is equal to 4x plus 3 now g is the same thing as y minus 3 divided by 4 or g of y g of y is equal to y minus 3 plus over 4 so then that means that in g wherever you see a y you have to write 4x plus 3 so that means that i write here basically instead of uh, 4x plus 3 4x plus 3 and uh, minus 3 divided by 4 which gives me basically 4x divided by 4 which is equal to x that means that g o f of x is equal to x g o f of of x is equal to x which means that which which means that basically uh, which means that g o f um, is a uh, is actually uh, so basically f of x is um, so basically f of x here is that means that g o f uh, 
we said that basically g o f has to be has to be the identity function on the on the on the uh, on the on the on the on the domain of the function right on the domain of the function so the domain of the function if i take it as x then g o f of x is equal to is is equal to x and um, And then let's see what is what it let let's see what we what we can find about f o g. So f o g is the same thing as f of g of y. Now f is the same thing as f of x is equal to four x plus three. f of x is equal to four x plus three, and g of y is the same thing as is the same thing as basically this thing over here. So that means that in f, wherever you see an x, you have to write y minus 3 divided by 4. So that means that you have 4 times, 4 times basically y minus 3 divided by 4. And what is the rest of f plus 3? So this 4 and this 4 cancel out. You have, you have y minus 3 plus 3, which is equal to y. That means that what this means is that basically what this means is that basically g o f of x is equal to x, which means that basically g o f is equal to i of the the domain of the function. That means that g o f is the is the is the identity function on the on the on the domain of the function, which means that g o f is equal to i of i of basically i of i of n because the domain of the function is the set of natural numbers and f o g is the the identity function on the on the on the range of the function which is or on the codomain of the function which is basically y and therefore you can say that um, and this implies that and therefore, and therefore, you can say that uh, uh, therefore f is invertible. Therefore, f is invertible, and g is the inverse of f. Is the inverse of f, right? Okay, so that was. Question number 23. So in the next video, we will talk about the rest of the questions. I'll right? see you in the next video. Thank you.